Hello there, this is Alex, and I am back with the third episode in this series. Last time we went over our first conditional statement, which is just the if-then, to be able to actually add some logic to our code. So we're not just working with variables and spitting back to the user what they typed, because that's boring. Last time, I challenged you to create a password lock or a password program, and if you were successful in that, then congratulations. You're definitely grasping it quickly. Use of resources like references, CC Tweaked has their own wiki. No matter if you're a seasoned veteran at a programming language, they always have to reference for correct syntax of functions that they may not frequently use. Anyway, I'm going to quickly, very quickly, put down a very simple password program for, for you to compare to, see if it comes kind of close to that. So we'll go ahead and put a variable of password, and we'll say the password is password123, because you got to have numbers, right? first thing we need to do is prompt the user for a password. So we'll go ahead and print, uh, enter password. The user knows, hey, we need to put in a password. So we're going to collect input. So input equals read. Now we have what the user typed in. The question is, is, is it equal to password? Is it correct? So that's where we pull out the if then statement. So if input equals, ah, I can't type, password, then uh, we're going to go ahead and welcome them. Otherwise, we'll put in an else. We're going to say incorrect. Go away. That is not the right password. You're not welcome. That is essentially all that's required for it to work. So we'll go ahead and run it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put some gibberish. Incorrect. Go away. Run it again. Let's put the correct thing this time. Welcome. So if you at least got that, you understood the basic premise behind the conditional statement. However, there are ways that we can make this program a lot better. For instance, if you remember, uh, there's two ways to print text to the screen. We got print, but we also got write. So let's see what the difference is just by changing that. Look at that. Now we're typing on the same line. It looks a lot more proper. We're going to go ahead and do password123 and welcome. Rather than it being this weird thing where we type underneath, now nah, that looks bad. So in general, use write if you're trying to collect user input like that. Uh, another thing, I challenge you to try and replace what the user types with stars. So it could be like a, a real world password. And all you have to do, uh, the read command has, uh, you can put in an argument. And what an argument is, is basically when you run a function, you can put in some additional information that the function will use. And it will kind of change how that function works. In this case, the read function lets you put in an argument in here to basically change everything you type into this string. Now, when I type, it's just stars. And I'm, I'm not typing stars either. I'll type the real password. Look at that. Welcome. That right there is a lot better. It's a, a proper password program with stars and with correct uh, formatting. Now, uh, let's just go over some basic functions that are in the term library. And I am, I've got it pulled up here. I'm on the CC tweaked wiki just so that I can reference it. Now term basically has to do with anything relating to the terminal. So for one, maybe we want to clear the screen whenever we run this program because there's going to be all sorts of junk. That's why this keeps just extending down the screen every time we run it. And that looks kind of bad. When we use the term, uh, there's going to be all sorts of options. Uh, we got clear, clear line, get background color, all sorts of things. All of these is on the CC Tweaked website. Uh, so in this case, we want clear, term.clear. And it's going to have those parentheses because it is a function that we are running. So let's see what happens when I run this. Look at that. It cleared the screen. But now it's kind of awkwardly positioned because the cursor didn't move. And that is also in the term because the cursor is relating to the terminal. So we're going to do term.clear, and then we're going to change the cursor position. So let's look. Oh, oops. Let's try that again. We can look down and see what looks correct. Uh, we got get cursor pause, which doesn't help because all that's doing is getting where it's at. We need to set the cursor pause. But scroll on down. And look at that, set cursor pos. Now it is very important 
that you keep in mind these uh this capital these capital letters here it is case sensitive so if you do not have a capital c or a capital p it's gonna error because it's an unknown command put our parentheses but this function actually requires some arguments because we need to tell it where to put the cursor um the screen resolution is well actually let me get out of here we can actually look at what the screen resolution is with term in fact if you don't know computer craft has an interactive lua prompt it's kind of like some sort of interactive shell where we can run lua commands like term.clear oops i need to put the curly there the the parentheses uh, there is term dot get size and that gives us two numbers 51 and 19. in this case the 51 is the x so that is how wide our screen is and the 19 is our y or how tall very weird resolution and it's very small very limiting but that is what we have to work with so 51 by 19 is our screen size if we want the cursor to go back in the top left corner then we need to change the cursor position to one, so the very far left, and then one, the very top left. So one to 19 is top to bottom, one to 51 is left to right. And look, now we're here. Knowing that, we can put that in our program. One comma one, or X and Y. Exit this, clear this clutter, and run our little program here. And bam, top left corner, Enter our password, let's do it again, bam. Cleared the screen, put us right back in the top left corner. Very useful, and it helps to make your programs look a lot cleaner. So now, let's say we want to actually make our password program effective, because currently as it stands, if we type the wrong password, we're still in the computer. I mean, we can't, we could tell them to go away, but we're not actually forcing them not to use the computer. They can choose to stay because they're a person and they can make decisions. So instead, we need to have a way to not let them use the computer or lock them out. We can do this by just running the program again. And this is going to be in the shell. So shell, go down, down, down. You can see run, shell, shell run. This is going to take an argument. It's going to be the program name. So this, the program name in my case is weasel.lua. And you got to make sure you put the .lua. All of these are Lua files. And this is going to be whatever your program name is. Let's uh, run it, see what happens. But that's weird. It's not saying incorrect, go away. What gives? It is working to uh, not let us proceed though, which is nice, but it's not printing this nice friendly line. And that is because this is running like instantly, so fast that it is actually printing this out, but we can't see it. So we need a way to slow it down. And that is with sleep. We can sleep for a integer amount of seconds. So it's important. This is a case where it's very important. You have your data types right. This has to be a number, no quotes. Two seconds, that's all I get. Uh, we gotta reboot it, there we go, or rerun the program. I enter my password wrong, incorrect, go away. And it restarts again. So that now it's an actually functioning password program. Uh, if we get it right, password one, two, three, and now we're in, we can type, we're in the computer. Look at that. Now I encourage you to check out the term, uh, more of the term functions here. As you can see, if I do term dot, and look at the different options here. We got get background color. We can also set background color, set text color. Uh, I encourage you to mess around with that. Try and give your screen a background color that's not black. Make it white or make it red, just something. Of course, it, you got to keep in mind that if we set the background color to white and our text is white, you're not gonna be able to see anything. So if you do, change the text color. Mess around with that, make your password program better, make it colorful. That's what I challenge you to do. And I hope this was informative and we will be going into the next video shortly. Have a good rest of your day.
拜拜。